Welcome to another episode of Dr. Brooke on the Block. It's time to grab a seat, buckle up, and take a ride with me through the wild, wild west of the Web3 universe, where we're going to learn all about coins and tokens, NFTs and contracts, digital real estate and the metaverse, and so much more. There is a lot to get through on the block, but I am here to pave the way and help you avoid those nasty pitfalls and rug pulls so you don't get hurt. I'm going to also introduce you to some interesting characters along the way. Are you ready? Your ride starts now. Hey, hey, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Brooke on the Block. I am your host, Dr. Brooke, and I am joined by my co-pilot today, Jodine. I'm very excited for you guys to get to meet her. Hi, Jodine. Hey, it's great to be here. I'm excited. I know. You are the NFT godmother, and we're going to dive deeper into what that means and what that looks like. You and I first connected on Clubhouse back in, gosh, 2020 at this point, and um, got to see or, you know, hear you moderate these incredible rooms. You are a fantastic speaker and just know how to engage an audience. And I just love that about you. And then getting to see you doing stuff in the NFT space, I said, I have to have this lady <laughs> on. We have to have a conversation. And so it's very, very cool for you, uh, for me to have you here today. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here. And um, I'm just really grateful to be able to speak into your audience and learn a little bit more, you know, of what everybody's got going on in, in your world and hopefully add some value to everybody as well. Absolutely. I have no doubt that you're going to do just that. So uh, what I always ask my co-pilots on the show is what their origin story is into the Web3 world, what kind of rabbit hole they fell into, and what kind of we uh, webs that weaved or weaved. Well, uh, <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, so tell us your story. Well, I think um, the first place that we met was when I ran that room for 21 consecutive days. And, um, you know, we were we were pretty busy. Um, yeah. But through yeah. that experience, you know, I got exposed to some major um, game players on Clubhouse and, uh, you know, hosted rooms for Grant Cardone and Elena and um, got to meet up with Ty Lopez. And, you know, we brought Russell on, Russell Brunson. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it was was great exposure. You know, if you would have asked me a year prior to that, if I would even be talking to these people, let alone hosting rooms for you, I would have said you're crazy. So, um, you know, the pandemic was good for that. It really brought us into yeah. a whole new realm of being able to um, meet up with um, people from all around the world. So with that, I was exposed to, and I actually hosted rooms for NFTs. And um, I could not understand their techno babble. I was totally confused. Um, you know, just hosted the rooms and tried to pretend like I knew, you know, what questions to ask. Um, <laughs> but I also missed out on that opportunity for, um, you know, that one infamous, um, the board yacht, yacht club. Yeah, yeah the, the board yacht, yacht club. <laughs> <laughs> I missed out on that opportunity because um, I just couldn't figure out how to, you know, get my MetaMask together. So mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> uh, with that, you know, kicking myself in the butt a little bit on that. But hey, it is it, what it is and life happens for us. So um, with that, you know, just kept the NFT world on radar. You know, like I was getting exposed to it, hearing about it. Finally, I just made the decision that I was going to go all in. And so I actually took a course on it. And in this course, we were going to be purchasing um, some NFTs. So I had loaded my MetaMask. And like mm -hmm. the day before, I was like, you know what? I really need to um, make sure I know how to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So I found a project, had some red flags, but still found a project and uh, went in to purchase and um, had roughly about $2,000 in my MetaMask and um, went to do the... Uh, because it was a, a pre-sale. So you, you know, you got in there and it was like, come back in an hour and then you're, you know, you're, you'll have time to, you know, get your NFTs. And I came back an hour later and couldn't purchase anything because there was no money left in my wallet. They had taken upon themselves to, you know, wipe my MetaMask completely out. And so I could have easily, you know, been disgruntled and just whined and fussed about it. But I took that $2,000 as self um, education. And so 
me being me on NFT Godmother, I just or at that time I was just known as Jodine. Um, mm -hmm. I opened up a room for 20, uh, we went 30 consecutive nights on NFTs. Mm -hmm. And like one of the first two or three rooms, somebody made the comment of like, you are like our crypto godmother. Well, me being the entrepreneur business, I go, you know, I was like, oh, shoot, URL is already taken. Well, I could buy it for 12,000, but I didn't feel like, oh, you know, that no, time. <laughs> it right. was worthy. And so I was like, um, or they, they said the crypto godmother. And so that was taken. And so then I thought, well, I kind of am talking about NFT. So then I typed in NFT godmother, that URL, you know, for $7, I'm like all over it. So I took yes. it and, and before I even said anything to anybody in the room. And I said, I said, what if we did the NFT godmother? And they're like, oh, that would be good. And I was like, well, I was kind of thinking about that. And then somebody piped up and they're like, yeah, it looks like the URL is already taken. And I was like, yeah, by me. Yay! <laughs> One thing I learned in Clubhouse, if you're going to do something, don't speak about it. Just do it. <laughs> right, right, right. So I grabbed it and that just started the whole journey. And like I said, we hosted um, rooms. We started about eight o'clock each night and uh, we went six hours most of the time just because um, that's how long they were recorded you know after you get after six hours they don't record them and the nice thing yeah. about doing it that late at night we got a lot of the europeans and other countries um those people would wake up in the morning and jump in with us so it wasn't just you know u.s conversation it was global and got to know people all over the world and um you know definitely made some really good money on nfts i'm very grateful that you know i was exposed for it and had a good time in there and now with the downfall the other thing, because you're in the NFT world, you also get exposed to the crypto world. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, just kind of listening to these guys mining and whatnot. And I'm like, wow. And then I started looking around and I'm from North Dakota and um, we are the geological jackpot of the world because we have natural gases. In fact, we mm -hmm. have enough stranded gas um, coming out of North Dakota that could actually fuel all of the miners in the world. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is interesting. Fascinating. Yeah. So um, I ended up um, kind of looking around and having conversations and trying to figure out, you know, I've got some land. And so I was trying to figure out how could I create a mining operation. So I started looking at investors. In fact, um, if you know Kevin O'Leary, he mm -hmm. is actually yep. about 45 miles away from me. He's on okay. the Indian reservation and uh, they are doing, um, you know, the hydro and with greenhouses yes. and whatnot. So um, actually spoke with their financial backers. Um, they were more interested in using um, diversifying and wanting to um, get into like wind farms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, wasn't really what I was looking for, um, but spoke to all types of investors all around the world, you know, and like one of them's like, you know, well, because at that point, I really hadn't gotten all my financials together. And they're like, well, you know, we really want your project. and We want to, you know, do it, but you don't have a lot of your financials in here. And I was like, well, you know, how much can you write a check for? Like, what what level are you guys? And they're like, without a heartbeat, they're like, we can write a check for a billion dollars. And I'm just wow. like, oh, OK, this is not a little SBA loan. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I've, this I've is done bigger than I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've done SBA loans. I've started, you know, right. successful businesses and, you know, done really well in different things. So, you know, it was just kind of funny. I was just like, oh, this is a little bit bigger project. Yeah. So now yeah. with the crypto world, you know, everything's just kind of on hold. Um, we mm -hmm. still have the capability. In fact, I just spoke to somebody last night in regards to, um, you know, the stranded gases and whatnot. So mm -hmm. um, I still strongly feel that at some point, you know, I will have. A mining operation. Um, it's just until the market kind of levels out and mm -hmm. kind of everybody feels a little bit more secure in it. Um, because right now with us, we have, um, there's industrial um, electricity and then there's um, a, a co-op and we're a co-op. Okay. And so okay. we um, are a little bit higher price, but it is straight across the board, like there's no hidden fees, you know, like a lot of these guys, especially, you know, they think it, they all want to be at that 3.5, um, which, you know, unless they're doing hydro, but if they're doing, you know, you know, off the grid, they're not going to get that anymore. You know, that mm -hmm. was, you know, mm -hmm. kind of in the beginning and everybody's kind of learned, you know, there's been a lot of shutdowns, a lot of states have already you right. know, 
crypto crypto out of mining miners out of the states. Um, mm -hmm. I will never do that though, just because um, you know our natural resources. We like I said, we do we pump 1.1 million barrels a day of oil. Wow. And so, you know we fuel a lot of people. Um, you know the natural uh, resources that we have. Mm -hmm the state so and our government understands that so and, and respectful of that yeah that is that is so fascinating and incredible and i love that that origin story it was <laughs> almost like here you are just being asked to host a room and you're just like oh my gosh i know i'm a great moderator but like what kind of questions do i ask <laughs> about this space and you you handled it with grace and did it so well clearly um that it's now evolved into this whole one, a brand, a right. name, you know, mm -hmm. the NFT godmother and you helping people in the space. But then now too, being able to open up your horizon into possibly looking into crypto mining with the property and everything you got there in North Dakota. So I want to applaud that. <laughs> I also want to talk about or briefly just give you massive credit for sticking in um, in there with the fact that you did get basically rug pulled right. um, for your $2,000 on MetaMask. And you mentioned something very, like there was a key word you said, and that was red flags. And you there were red flags <laughs> that you still proceeded. And so through your experience, you're able to share with my listeners and my audience that, hey, when Dr. Brooke or the crypto proctor is talking about rug pulls and to be careful of these pitfalls and these kind of things, it, it does happen. It's not just right. this kind of like, oh, like whimsical, like <laughs> I'm not going to get hurt. I'm invincible, you know, <laughs> but you still, you didn't let it keep you down. Right. It, it, it maybe it took some wind out of your sail initially and you, you had your moment and then you you turned around and grabbed that domain and you've you've created what you've created. And so I think it's it's really cool. It's really fascinating. So great job. Well, and I'm gonna just go back one step to um, you know, the way that I got on Clubhouse was from Russell Brunson. Really? Yeah, he gave, he sent me the invite. Okay. And then, um when um I I when I, I had gotten my name, I put my name in there. And then yes. I didn't really think about it, you know, and then um, it was kind of a big thing. We got it, you know, and so I went in there again and I was like, I guess I activated my account. You know, I mean, there was yeah. a couple of different steps yes. back then. Yeah. And I was like, well, this will be a two week period. You know, I don't yeah. need to worry about it. And um, um, and the reason that when Russell sent that to me, the big thing that I noted to myself was I'm going to use this as an opportunity whatever doors open up for me, I'm going to open them. You know, I'm not going to sit here and just passively look at this, you know, platform. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see what's, what it's all about mm -hmm. and take every opportunity. And so, um, Kevin Anson, who is one of, uh, Russell's, um, video photographers is a good friend of mine. And because we are on different platforms and whatnot, I got escorted to the front of the the door or the gate or whatever for right. clubhouse and got right. in like within minutes. And I was shocked because I thought, you know, I was anticipating two or three weeks of right. waiting time because that's what everybody had been saying. Yes. And I so I remember those days. <laughs> yeah. So because I had made that decision of I was going to, you know, let everything be an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's what helped me when I did get rugged um, to say, OK, how can I turn, you know, these lemons into lemonade? and yeah. uh, create something out of it. So I think that that has always been the forefront and the purpose for me on Clubhouse is to just make sure, you know, because you never know, um, you know, a conversation, like we're only three conversations uh, away from, you know, a million dollar deal. You know, I mean, That's you just true. have to have conversations all the time. And so I've been, you know, I've met, um, I've got like 20,000 followers, which isn't big for the number of people that have been through my rooms. But I never was one to, you know, follow, follow, follow me. You know, I was just like, if they like me, they're going to follow me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. And, and I mean, you did, you, you have been, and you continue to create so much value and it, it's a very welcoming space. And I, from being in rooms that you've moderated, you're really great at, if it is a, a room of a manageable size, of course, if it's 3000 people in there, it's not as easy, but you know, 30, 40 people in the room, you're great at acknowledging people, even the listeners down below, you know, 
Hey, Brooke, thank you for being here. You know, so-and-so, Sarah, nice to see you, Tyler. And, and you're really great at that. And I just, yeah, so. Yeah, I, well, I, even, oh, I will say, even in the 3,000, Grant had a room one time. And that was when he was um, speaking into the uh, um, million dollar. Um, oh, the billion dollar or the. Undercover millionaire. The undercover billionaire or something. Billionaire. Yes. Was it yeah, billionaire yeah, yeah, yeah. Either Billion. whatever he was. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, like that, yeah. Um, he what had else? about 3,000. I actually got called into his room because it was kind of out of control and uh, had to get control of it for him. So that was a big room, but it was. Oh you my know, gosh, woman. And That's then, like um, yeah, uh, when Elon Musk came in, um, mm -hmm. I thought I was in his actual room, but. I got popped into an extra room. Mm -hmm. And so I co-modded that and we had 5,000 people in that room. And that was wow. crazy because, and then we ended up, this was hilarious and just fun things that you can do when you get to having conversations. And, you know, yeah. I mean, I think that's the great thing about NFTs too. Um, but we ended up hosting that room until like two o'clock in the morning and Forbes Riley and I, she was in there and we were bantering back and forth for like about 20 minutes and it was like two o'clock in the morning and you know i'd been hosting the room for five or six hours anyway and i just couldn't believe there was like still like 250 people in there listening to us just banter back and oh forth for like God. half an hour so <laughs> it was fun so. there, yeah well there's definitely a lot of cool things that you know are in there that come out of there there's also you know other stuff that eh, but but there's the cool stuff and those are the cool stories and that that's awesome so all of, to, to say all of that, or, you know, when you sharing all of that, your background, like story, when you started to really understand what NFTs were and what the power that they have, like, what was that defining moment or where was that, you know, you, you made the decision, okay, I'm going to try to buy an NFT. But at what point did you say, holy freaking cow, now I'm actually understanding the power of this technology. Right. I need to go like all in. Well, first of all, you know, I'm going to say NFTs are here to stay. You yeah. might as well start learning them now so that you truly understand it once we need to have them. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, everything's progression. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we all progress. You know, I mean, look at our cell phones compared to I mean, I don't know how old you are, but, you know, I mean, I was the on the the phone with the cord stretched, hiding in the closet, you know, trying to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was the dial-up internet when yeah. you're yelling at someone to get off the phone so you could get on the internet. <laughs> exactly. Yes, we had to share my era. And You had to wait until Grandma got off the phone before you could, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was listening to somebody the other day. And it was a guy interviewing his child or son. He was about 14, 15. Yeah. And it was funny because he goes, um, he goes, what is a, or he goes, yeah, what is AOL? And he was like, <laughs> I don't know. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, what's dial up? And he's like, oh is it like gosh. a hookup? You know, like I was just I know. Like, at all these questions and I'm like going, oh my gosh, this is, we're, we're changing. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, for me, you know, NFTs, I, you know, like I said, I hosted rooms. I was, I didn't mm -hmm. understand the techno babble and I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, ETH and Solana mm -hmm. and Ethereum, mm -hmm. all these things. And so when I got rugged, I made a decision that I needed to understand the security and also teach people how they could ensure that they didn't go through what I did. Yes. Right. Because yeah. um, if you're not careful, you can make bad, you know, mm -hmm. decisions and you can lose a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So um, with that, I, um, you know, preach over and over and over um, because we've I've hosted a lot of rooms where we actually have um, I had the uh, shortest uh, NFT marketing <laughs> um, conference. And uh, within six hours, we did like 38 NFTs like we had half an hour for everybody to kind of speak into it. Yeah. And, um, yes. you know, I mean, if I preach anything, I'm like research, research, research. Amen. Um, because it's so crucial that you understand, um, you know, what you're getting into. And, you know, you know, Dr. Brooke and I can speak all day long about a project. But at the end of the day, it's got to be something that's in alignment for you mm -hmm. and that you understand it. And, mm -hmm. you know, just like insurance, I was told a long time ago, don't buy any insurance pr uh, programs uh, that you cannot, or policies that you cannot explain to your grandma. 
Like mm-hmm. if you don't understand it, you shouldn't be buying it. It's the right. same with NFTs. You know, you've got to understand what the utility is. You got to understand. And there's different ones. You know, I mean, the original NFTs was all about the artwork and a lot of the um, the PFPs and a lot of them, you know, started to add utilities. But now it's really um, and I say there's always old school NFT buyers and mm-hmm. there's new school. And the old mm-hmm. school, they are collecting the art. You know, mm-hmm. they see the long term and um, you see a lot of those that are really wanting to know that what the PFPs are. And um, I even yeah. heard like Kevin O'Leary speak into, you know, art right now is one of the things that, you know, our economy is so scary that um, a lot of people are buying art um, yeah. because art will always, you know, retain its value mm-hmm. um, in most cases. But, um, you know, even Kevin O'Leary said, hey, um, I will buy this, but I want an NFT with it. And, you know, the gallery was wow. like, we don't have, he's like, well, you better figure it out. He goes, because I'm not taking possession of it until there's an NFT so that I can, you know, have proof of it and yep. it's all right there. So, I yep. mean, you're going to also see, and I say that um, to let everybody know, as, you know, if you own a business, you better start figuring out what NFTs are because mm-hmm. pretty soon the consumer is going to be saying, where's my NFT with this? Yes. Because it's on the blockchain. It can be, you know, tracked and everybody yep. knows that it's there. That so, you are. I think that's a big thing. Yeah. They, they know that you're the owner of that piece. And I think right. that that's what Kevin is trying to get at too. It's like he can own the most authentic Mona Lisa or Mona Lisa but if there's nothing really to like prove, well, how do you know it's authentic? Could it be like, you know, a knockoff? Well, no, right. it's here in the blockchain. Here is the piece. Here is my ownership, my name tied to that. So that's the beauty of what blockchain technology is doing and how NFTs are going to be obviously built on top of that technology to be able to track those things. Right. I want to define something really briefly for the audience because you mentioned PFPs. <laughs> all that is, all Jodine is saying is profile photo, profile pic. So it's like your profile photo that you use or profile picture that you use on your social media channels. People are creating PFP projects or, or what they're called, you know, to give people these cool little characters that they can use on their social media feeds. Yeah. And I'm going to tell everybody that is listening, um, if you try to figure out the techno babble of how <laughs> they came up with all these acronyms. You're going to waste a lot of energy because I would be like <laughs> writing things down and I'm like, what the heck is PFP? What is that? And, and pretty soon, you know, like 20 minutes later, I'd be like, what is at What is PFP? And then they said, you know, profile picture. And I'm like, and I'm like writing it on. I'm like, how does that even match up? And they're like, don't ask, you know, I'm like, <laughs> Don't ask, but I I have to make a quick shameless plug. And this is also in the show notes of every single episode is I did put together like a mini dictionary. And by mini, I mean, like it's 11 pages, all in alphabetical order. I am grabbing that. The the (laughs) words of Web3 and it breaks it down, you know, and it will define. So if you're hearing words in these episodes that you don't understand, have a copy of that printed off and then, okay, what did, what did she say? And you quickly <laughs> see it and you can. Totally I am grabbing that. I'll tell you that because I actually started it and it just drove me crazy. You know, I mean, I had a very good English teacher and it was really difficult for me to yeah. <laughs> look at those. And I feel like though, this doesn't even make sense. So I no, it doesn't. That. There, there's a lot of acronyms and it, and it's really just, you know, uh, like you said, just, it, it's kind of, it's almost like you people in the space feel like they're cool when they're using the words. And then people tr- like, I'm like, we're not helping guys. We're not helping the general public get in here when we start talking about wag me. And, you know, it's like <laughs> hodl, like hodl. I'm yeah. like, it was hodl. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. But it was great when I had those rooms, man, I would, I would stop them dead in their tracks. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know what that is. You know I mean? Like I was not shameless at all. Um, you know, I would try to figure some things out, but then I would be like, what are you talking about? You know? Yeah. But good for you. See, a lot of people don't do that. They're like, well, I don't want to look dumb. I'm not going to ask a question. And you're oh, like, no, no, what is this? Like, what are you doing? So I'm figuring if I don't know it, there's got to be at least one other person. In this room that yeah, know. I know for yeah. sure. What is, what are some, there's so many future use cases of NFTs. You know, we talked about art and having physical ownership of a piece of art and then also having the digital 
like a uh, print or the digital receipt to say that you own that. What other future use cases of NFTs do you see? Or like, what is one that you're most excited about as we kind of move into this new world? I don't know that I'm excited about it because I'm not a big medical person. In fact, I just had a sliver in my thumb and it's the Ooh, first time I've been to ow. the doctor in 15 years. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, really? I have to go. We have an old house. Like my house yeah. is 18 years old and yeah. I was sanding wow. and a yeah. big old sliver went in there and infected. And, you know, and the doctor was so funny. He looked at me, he goes, something's got to be wrong. He goes, cause you're never in here. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're like, but I know with that medical records. In fact, um, I am going to be ramping up now that winter's coming back in North Dakota, I'll mm -hmm. be back in the rooms, uh, doing a lot of NFT godmother rooms, um, mm -hmm. on the platforms. And uh, if you go to jodine.club, you can always see where we're at because all my social is on there. So if you're interested and want to get in and always, you know, raise your hand and come up and talk to me because I love and tell me where you, you know, you heard us here or whatever, because I yeah. love, you know, how I get to meet people all around the world. But one of the uh, people that we'll have on because I was listening to um, uh, uh, I was in a room with them and um, they're talking about getting all of our medical records on nfts and it's yeah. already in process and they're working yeah. on it and um, my daughter is um a uh, is the um uh director for our little clinic um in in tioga here and so you know i'm thinking gosh how is that gonna affect the smaller communities like you know will they you know i mean getting all that information onto the blockchain you know how is that going to happen and, uh, you know, will they be, you know, kind of the latecomers? And he said, interesting enough, um, most of the smaller facilities actually get online faster and quicker because the larger clinics and hospitals, you know, they've got so much information to upload and whatnot, which yeah. I mean, makes sense. But I just thought it was, you know, interesting how, you know, smaller clinics will actually be the, you know, smaller communities will be the first to have this implemented. And the reason that it's a big thing here in North Dakota is we have a lot of, we call them snowbirds. They go to Arizona or Texas yes. in the winter yeah. time. And, you know, about this time as it starts cooling off, all of a sudden the, you know, the clinic's inundated because they all have to get their paperwork and they get their mm -hmm. folder and mm -hmm. they put it in the cubby, you know, of their vehicle when mm -hmm. they drive down there. So they got that information because now with all the HIPAA and stuff, you know, it's made it a lot more complicated right. so now. Um, you know, and that's the other thing too. My question to him was, Hey, what's it going to be like? I mean, are we actually going to own our own information, right? Mm -hmm. Are we going to be able to actually own that? Because mm -hmm. we've got doctors who are, you know, diagnosing it. We've mm -hmm. got nurses that are inputting it. You know, they're taking blood. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. how does that tie in, you know, the legal part? Like, mm -hmm. you know, do, you know, who does own that? So, mm -hmm. but in the end, I think, you know, I mean, we all will own our own information and, um, you know, that will be an, an item that's on the blockchain so it can be pulled up and everybody, you know, whoever needs to have access to that will have access to it. So. Yeah. And in, in the health records sense, it's definitely whoever needs to have access in terms of like the medical professionals or, you know, so many times in, in my clinic in working with patients, patients have to bring in documentation from their general practitioner or x-rays or MRI reports, because I don't have a database access to a database that I can pull that information right. where I would with like private blockchains, right. with blockchains that aren't necessarily public that are running around, but it's privatized enough to where, like you said, people who need to see it can see it. And I, I do personally think like, again, like you said, not necessarily the one that I'm most excited about, but I do see a lot of future use case with the medical records. Uh, being I think that's going to be the one that's going to kind of wake everybody up and see. I mean, it's a good use case that everybody needs. You know, yeah. what I mean, it's yeah. going to affect everybody. Right. So I think that that's going to be the one that kind of, you know, catapults it into normalcy for Absolutely. lack of better words. Absolutely. And actually, like you saying that right there, you know, triggered in my mind. It's also something I do like to talk about quite a bit is I truly believe there's so many aspects about blockchain, right? So and, and that's why I call it Dr. Brooke on the block is because I don't want to just limit it to NFTs or limit it to just crypto or or different things. But like, let's talk about it all. The metaverse, mm -hmm. DeFi, crypto, everything. 
But to me, mass adoption is truly going to come through NFTs. Right. That's where mass adoption is going to come through. Like people are going to have NFTs that they don't even recognize that are a, a true NFT because they are just going to grab their Southwest barcode to, to board their plane and not recognize, oh, that's kind of cool little artwork. It's, you know, <laughs> the QR code has now shifted into something else. Oh, cool. I'm going to, I'm going to save that, you know, my trip to North Dakota, like great, you know, as a little, you know, reminder, because we've all done that in the past. We have concert stubs and tickets mm -hmm. and things like that of memories. All of that is going to be digitalized through NFTs. And that to me is where mass adoption, not just with ticketing, but NFTs as a whole is where mass adoption is going to come. Right. And yeah. I even think, you know, like eventually like our pictures and stuff like that, because I mean, even now, you know, you can go to Walmart or wherever and, um, you know, for the month's picture, you can have it all printed out, you know, and I think we're going to yeah. see things like that because, you know, I mean, I look at I raised five daughters and there's 10 wow. years between them. And, um, you know, my oldest is 31. And I look and, you know, back then it was a big thing to put the shoe boxes and have all your pictures in it. Right. Yeah. Well, she's got like three or four of them, right? Right. And by the time Mackenzie came along 10 years later, she's got one. And when I look through it, there's actually pictures of like the other kids, but they all looked alike. <laughs> I'm like, it's got Mackenzie's name on it, but I surely that is Haley. You know? <laughs> right. Like, you know, Jordine, you said something there is so funny. So I'm the oldest of five and my childhood albums are, it's like, the first time she rolled over. Oh, she rolled over this much. She did that. And, my and every car sister, that anybody gave you, they have. Oh my, my youngest sister, hers is like, just like you said. And, you know, just like, I'm 38. So your, your oldest, you know, has, I, I have seven years on her, but it's still the same traditional yeah. idea of what our parents were doing or what you were doing during that time. Well, and the big thing too, is by the time, you know, like, um, cause it, it does, it goes down. Like Shelby has yeah. like one less and then Haley has like two, you know, and then poor Taylor and McKenzie, they just have one. Taylor had actually has pictures in it though, but okay. for McKenzie, um, you know, it, we were going into the digital, you know, yeah. so like yeah. we didn't print it out as much, right. you know, where the other ones I was still printing and sending to grandmas. And, uh, you know, by then it was like, you know, so. Right. No, for sure. That. <laughs> This is this has been a fun, fun conversation um, as we're starting to wind down the ride and pull it into the station for today. Is there anything that you want to share with the audience? Maybe something that I didn't ask you or that we didn't hit on? I think the big thing when it comes to NFTs and I preach this all the time. And if you ever are in a room, I will, you know, research, 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 make yeah. sure you're comfortable with it. Um, also, you know, when it comes into the NFTs, cause I've kind of stayed on the NFT, um, guidelines here, um, make sure that you get to know, um, and you can vet, um, all of the developers and, yes. um, that you actually see their social media, um, and that you know who they are, because what happens is a lot of these, um, you know, where you're going to have the bad experience is where you get rugged. And, uh, yes. you know, when you can't find the people, when you don't, um, really know who they are and you don't understand what's going on, that's when there's a problem. So mm -hmm. make sure you're always researching, um, get to know them. That's why I like to have like clubhouse and Twitter rooms too, is because then you can actually ask questions to them directly. I know a lot yes. of people like the discord discord. I just don't enjoy discord just because of all the, um, you know, there's a lot of rug pulling going on in there too and scams. Mm -hmm. And if you are in Discord, make sure you turn off all of the notifications. Do yes, not ever. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. I was going to say that. Do not respond to any direct message about yep. you've turn been them off. whitelisted for this project. Yep. You have not been whitelisted for that project. And you yep. will lose your money. Yep. So yep. I always tell everybody, as soon you know, if you do go in Discord, go in there and um, get into the controls and turn everything off so that you mm -hmm. don't even get enticed or because I mean, mm -hmm. when you least expect it is when you're going to get, um, mm -hmm. you know, rugged. In fact, I um, went to stake one of my NFTs and, you know, did the official and everything. And I actually, it, it got stolen out of my wallet. And I mean, I was pretty, oh, no. you know, I've, I've had a lot of, I mean, there's definitely, I mean, I've made good money. So I've always yes. felt like I'm, yeah. you know, ahead of the game. Right. But I mean, I've had some expensive 
um, losses. Oh shit. Did I, add? Oh, and the other thing I will tell you guys, if you do an NFT, do not be doing anything else. Um, do not have any alcohol in you. Not that I had alcohol ever, but <laughs> do not have any alcohol in you. Like if you have alcohol in you, do not open your MetaMask period. Yes. That's a golden <laughs> rule, right. I no love that. Stupid mistakes. Like we've had That's a great. lot of conversations of people that are like, Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, you know yep. I mean? Make sure that you, and then also, um, do it on your laptop and only have, you know, the needed NFT, um, link um, opened. Out. Don't have anything else. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. I, I preach that a lot. Um, make sure you research it, make sure you get to vet all of the people that are in it. Um, and don't buy, take out the emotion. Mm -hmm. Think of it as, you know, an mm -hmm. investment and you have to remove the emotion. If you start getting mm -hmm. emotional, then you need to turn off your computer, put your MetaMask away and come mm -hmm. back the next day. Because mm -hmm. if you feel that yeah. anxiety, if you feel, um, you know, we talk a lot about um, the psychology of buying NFTs too. And mm -hmm. um, you've got to take those emotions away because otherwise you're going to make bad decisions and bad choices as well. So yep. that's kind of your mama bear. <laughs> I love it. I love it, mama bear. Those are great, great, great yeah. tips. Well, actually okay. one of the uh, last projects that I was um, hosting a room for was um, the Rue Bunnies, which is actually the Playboy Bunnies. Okay. And um, that's been interesting learning like the whole back end of what all was going on um, at the mansion. And wow. I really got to know, and you talk about interesting stories. There's definitely interesting stories are there. But when I was hosting a room for them, I kind of noticed that somebody had kind of made a derogatory mark in the, in the comments um, in a, in a room. And so I was kind of aware, but, and um, he had raised his hand. So I let him come up. And he started kind of, kind of bullying. And, you know, at first, uh, Victoria was, Whoa. you know, answering the question and whatnot. And, you know, I mean, it was still controllable. But then he, he kind of came to the next question. I was like, Nope, I said, Look, and I mean, I just shut him down right then pushed mm -hmm. him down and actually pushed him out of the room. Because mm -hmm. basically, he was coming in there. And, you know, talking about how NFTs were fraud. And I mean, like, and I told, you know, everyone's like, Whoa, what's going on? And I said, Look, I said, this is the NFT God room, or Godmother's room. Yeah, club. And I said, we're here to be positive about NFTs. We're here to promote NFTs. And, you know, he obviously wanted to pick a fight. He wanted mm -hmm. to be a bully. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's that's not acceptable in here. And mm -hmm. like, I got so many comments. They're like, oh my God, we've never had anybody protect us like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's like, Aww. if you're in those rooms, yes, you can ask questions. Yes, you yeah. can, you know, but if you're coming in there to be disgruntled and try to, you know, bully your way through, um, it's not going to happen in my room. I can tell you yeah. that. So. <laughs> I love that. I love that you're protecting everybody and you're, you're putting the mama bear arms around them and saying, Hey, I'm going to help you through this. We're going to get through it. We're going to learn, we're going to grow, we're going to evolve. And you know what? There's a lot of financial benefits that can be made from this space. You talked about, you know, you've made quite a bit of money doing this and it is definitely possible when you utilize the right tools and, you know, strategies. And you talked about ways to protect themselves from that. So be sure to go check out jodine.club. The link to it will be in the show notes um, and, and learn and engage and be in those rooms. Find out about cool, interesting projects that are, that are being hosted and, and ask really difficult questions and learn about it. So there's a, there's a lot to be gained. There is. And I think the big thing, too, is just encourage you. I mean, any of your listeners right now, I commend you and, you know, congratulations for, you know, educating yourself because that's mm -hmm. how we're all going to get better and more comfortable with the yeah. NFT and the blockchain is, you know, the more knowledge, you know, the more power there is, um, you know, like the state of North Dakota actually went to the NFT Miami um, to promote North Dakota for crypto mining and whatnot. And I'm not sure why they went to the NFT one, but <laughs> anyway, you know, I called them up and said, Hey, do you guys actually know what NFTs are? Or, you know, I mean, I, I was just rather surprised that they went down there yeah. and yeah. Um, they were like, no, we don't really have a clue. And, and so I spent oh, like 45 minutes <laughs> giving <laughs> their office a little yeah. rundown on how NFT and crypto, you know, tied together and whatnot. So I think, you know, I just do your part, you know, if somebody doesn't know, um, give them the time to understand it because the more you explain it to other people, mm -hmm. the more you're going to learn and the more you're going to understand 
how, you know, it, we're all going to benefit from it in the end. So, yeah. and I know there's going to be some people that are, you know, I mean, change is hard for everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of old school people out there that, you know, fight that change, but I don't see us being able to win on this one. I think, you know, NFTs are really going to come on once yeah. the government, you know, kind of makes a little bit stronger rulings of how everything's going to, you know, mm -hmm. play out in that aspect. Um, you're going to see, I mean, the major brands are already out there. They're not pushing it, you know, at this point, just because they don't know the uncertainty, but um, the NFT um, and has moved a lot of crypto um, in the last year. And people are really mm -hmm. surprised when they look at those numbers. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's not as big as it was a year and a half ago, two years ago, but um, there's still, you know, monies and transactions being blockchain currencies uh, moving on, um, on the blockchain because, um, you know, these major brands are pushing their NFTs out there. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. True, true, true. What she's saying is so right. There's tons of brands that are out there really starting to do things in this space and they don't want to be left behind. We don't want you to be left behind. So just like mama and uh, NFT godmother said, <laughs> you know, really research, 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 learn, 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 engage, be a part of the communities, put yourself out there, ask questions. Don't be afraid to like, you know, like make, make us or have a stupid question. Like we're all learning. There's none of us in this space currently. It's so brand new. Some are further along in the journey than others, but it's, we're all learning. Right. And um, join us, join in on the fun. And um, yeah, excited that you took this ride with us through the wild, wild west. <laughs> um, we are definitely embarking on a new world. And it's, it's, it's exciting for me to bring you people like Jodine and have her co-pilot this episode with me. Any final words, Jodine, before we, we have everybody disembark on the ride today? Um, and I, it's always my lasting words, research, research, research. <laughs> and, um, you know, the big thing too, is you were talking about, you know, stupid questions. The only stupid question out there is the question you didn't ask. Mm -hmm. Um, because mm -hmm. that, and I will say, um, in closing, I, in the web three, the crypto, the NFT, all of these, everybody is compassionate about helping yeah. you. So yeah. if you are confused, um, it's probably been the easiest um, platform that I've learned the most of by asking, um, mm -hmm. because everybody embraces and they're willing to answer your questions. So don't be afraid to ask. So awesome. Well, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Jodine, for being here and um, exit to the right. We don't um, exit to the right and we will see you on the next episode. For now, we'll talk to you soon. You made it. Congratulations. That wasn't so bad, was it? I hope you laughed and learned a little bit more about this Web3 universe and how simple and fun it can really be. Would you be so kind as to leave us a review and share it with your friends and family? It would mean so much to get this out to more people as we embark on the greatest transfer of wealth that has ever happened in human history. Can't wait to see you on the next one.